So welcome back, guys. It's been a, been a few weeks. So today we're talking about the IMC 5.1 Compliance Center. So why would this be of interest to you? So uh, compliance is something that really concerns everybody because um, GRC regulations say you have to. Um, SOX, HIPAA, PCI, all these things, there's some component where you're going to have to verify your configurations. And um, to be honest, even beyond that, security is a 24-7 job. So it might be nice to having your NMS really automate a lot of these functions for you and make sure you're secure. And last but certainly not least, it's better to find out before someone else does. There's a lot of default vendor credentials that ship from vendors to really make your lives easier when trying to install these new devices and they're all pretty well documented so anybody who wants to do bad things they probably know what the default credentials are so it's probably a really great idea to get those off of your devices before someone finds them. Let's go take a look and see how you can do that. So this is the default IMC homepage that we all know and love and um, we're gonna go into services, configuration center, and we're gonna go down to the configuration center and we're gonna find a device, in this case a uh, an HP 5500EI that I've uh, prepared for us today with some credentials that we don't exactly want on them and first thing we're gonna do is back up the device. So the way that the Compliance Center works, or, or can work in general, is um, it's actually going to compare whatever rules and policies you set up against a, a backup um, of the devices. So you need to have a backup in the repository to compare your rule set to. There we go. So we now have a good uh, running and startup configuration. You'll see those here in a second. We're going to go in and actually take a look at what's in those configurations. So again, over here to the right. I'm going to click on the little arrow here, click on latest running configuration, and what I've got set up is a um, an SNMP rule that I want to be able to go out and look for. So uh, in this case, I'm running SNMP v2c. Please don't do that. Please use v3. Be secure. Use something encrypted. Use something with, with an integrity check in it. Um, don't do this at home. I'm a professional. So anyways, um, once we get to the bottom here, you can see I've got a couple of different sets of strings here. We've got the default of public and private, and then we've got this other test public and test private. So those are the, the strings that we're going to concern ourselves with today. Okay? So now we're going to go to um, right into the Compliance Center, and this is where we find our basic rule sets. So we have some predefined rule sets here. Um, I've got these all disabled for now because there's really only one that we're going to concern ourselves with. So I've got this test rule here at the bottom. Um, this is something I've already set up. I've given it a name. We're going to go over to the right here. And we're going to click on the modify buttons. So you can get an idea of how these rules would actually work and when you're setting them up. So this is a rule that's already predefined and again I could have multiple rules within this particular compliance policy so in this case I've only got a single rule um, if you wanted to bind multiple of these together telnet check for telnet um, all your unencrypted management interfaces make sure that stuff's all turned off you could do that so in this case um, you know we want to set what kind of an alarm what kind of a severity level if I'm in violation of this so I can go to whatever level I want make it a major critical um, you know I have the ability to apply this to devices to links even a JSON script if that's something that you guys uh, wanna wanna look at nothing we're gonna look at today though we're gonna keep this really really basic so we're gonna apply against the latest running configuration and if you want you can ensure that this uh, job only applies to certain kinds of devices certain vendors uh, and yes we do support that vendor um, Basically, what we're going to do here is, is just keep this basic. We're going to go back, change it back to all devices, and we're going to take a look at the rest of the rules and how we've got this really laid out and what the logic is here. We've got a description field. So for this, it's always good to have a description. Let you come back later and remember what you did. Um, this is just a basic SNMP check, so that's the description we're going to put in here. And there we are. So now you have this recover button and recover is, it's not going to be an auto remediation, but it will allow you to, um, to pre-populate the commands 
that someone is going to want to run if you find this violation. So if you're looking, for instance, for um, SNMP public and private, or in this case, test public and test private, the way on a comware switch from HP you're going to get rid of that is undo command set. And of course, you're going to have to use the sys to get into the, the system view, the equivalent to the conf t um, enable on a Cisco device. So, um, And as well, you can look here. You can do a basic check. You can do an advanced check. An advanced check basically allows you to write a regex expression. So um, get out your regex buddy and, uh, and have fun with this. Again, for us, we're going to do a really, really basic check here. We're just going to do a string comparison. We're going to go in down, and I will paste this back in. Get rid of the undo here. There we go. And I want to look for a negative loose match. So I want to make sure that this commands here do not appear in the configuration. That's a violation of this policy would mean that these commands are not in the config. OK, so um, some of the logic here is this is a little backwards logic. You can look for it or say it must not be there. You're going to want to play around with this a little bit. It isn't quite as intuitive because of the um, double negatives that you can apply and it's something you're going to want to play around with a little bit and just make sure your rules are there. So the nice thing is we have this little test button. So once you've written your rule set, you can then type and, and paste in your, uh, your configuration and you can say whether or not this rule is going to apply. So of course, it doesn't apply here. So let me fix this out. Test again. Look at that. Must not contain that. It doesn't contain those um, the rule set that we uh, just typed in, and we're good to go. So again, I, I understand the logic's going to be a little confusing. That's really why we have this test button in here. It's it's really normal that you're going to have to work a little bit to make sure you get your compliance rules right, and just make sure you test them out. Don't, don't just throw them in there and expect everything's going to be perfect. Um, we're human beings. We make mistakes. That's okay. That's why we do these things multiple times and turn over the task to a computer who can do repetitive tasks forever and do a wonderful job doing that. So again, we've, uh, we're now going to go in and create this actual task, right? So we're going to name it, give it a uh, check SNMP name, um, look for what kind of a severity level we want. Um, the rule sets, this is the rule we just applied. So now we're going to have to choose which devices we would like to apply this to. So in my case, I'm only going to apply it to a single um, HP 5500EI. Good, this is the query engine. This is, uh, I, I won't really talk about that. We've done that at the, quite a few times already. I'm going to click OK. Um, if you wanted to, you could apply it to all the devices in your network, or all the Cisco devices, or all the HP devices, or basically any device that IMC can back up by default. Right? Now I'm going to run this rule set. And it's already running. There we go. Click on the refresh button. Look at that. There we go. Now we can see we've got a policy violation. Um, what policy violation? We had a minor violation. That was the severity of the rule set that we set up. And if we want, we can go in and actually look at this. And we can, um, if you've got multiple policies bound into this, I've got a single one. You'll actually see what rule set you, you fired against, where the violation actually was. Um, you can scroll down to the bottom here and get more, a little more information, explanation on what the different severity levels are. Um, it's a nice report to have. So the next thing you'll see here is um, is this fix button. So the fix button, this is this is the recover step that we created previously. So again, this is pre-populated information that will really allow um, maybe your higher level engineers to, to, to script out a way of fixing something so that a junior level engineer doesn't even have to think about this or quite honestly so your senior level engineers don't have to think about this they can go back to architect architecting and doing what they do best and they don't have to remember some of these monotonous commands so again click on the fix button it'll give you a sanity check you can take a look at it again and make sure that this is what you really want to do so it's actually going to run these commands against the device in question and it's going to attempt to fix what the violation was. Again, we get to our typical scheduling engine. Um, I'm going to schedule it immediately. I want this off of my, my, my device right now. Um, in your case, you probably got a change window, at least I hope you do. You might have to wait to the change window, um, depending on your change advisory board and your change policies. Um, 
This might be an exception. You might want to do it right away. So again, creates the task. We can sit, see here that it is executing. Look at that, finished, succeeded. So now this is the part that uh, is really a nice touch that, that they put in here. You click on the succeeded button, you'll be able to go in, you'll get the, the typical information when it ran, what was the success. I can actually go in and, and see what exactly happened on the system here. So you'll notice we did a backup before, we did a backup after, we ran the change, and now I can view changes and right from within the task I can see exactly what was changed. I can click on my show diff button so this is like the other, any other compare configuration and I can see that the before had those commands. Go over to the other side I can see the other side does not have those commands in it which is pretty much exactly what you want to see. So that's the, uh, a real basic example. I, I hope you guys get a chance to play with this and really this is going to help you out in, in some of your compliance initiatives. See you next time on the next IMC management tutorial.